This week I'll answer the question, how many watt seconds do I need? Adorama TV presents Digital Photography One-on-One, -on -one, where we answer your questions. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Welcome to another episode of Digital Photography One-on-One. -on -one. This week we're going to talk all about watt seconds. So let's start by looking at our question. We have two people that ask questions about watt seconds. The first is TJ, and he said simply, can you explain watt seconds? Our second question is from Mark. He said, I'm going to buy a flash. How many watt seconds do I need? When we talk about watt seconds, it's a little like comparing apples to oranges because watt seconds really represent energy potential. And I know it's getting all scientific-y. And so instead of doing that, let's just hop into the studio and show you a few things. Let's start by talking about watt seconds. What is a watt second? Well, it's a unit of energy, a unit of measurement of energy specifically, but I could talk to you about some scientific stuff. It doesn't really matter. What really matters is that you understand watt seconds represent how much energy a flash can store. It does not equate directly to how much light comes out of your flash. Think of it like a gas tank in a car. You might have a lot of gas in your car, but that doesn't mean you're gonna get a lot of miles per gallon. That really depends on the engine and the tires, if they're inflated correctly, how you drive, all kinds of stuff. Well, the same is true of watt seconds. So you might have a lot of watt seconds, but it might not give you a lot of light. And so to really help you understand this, I have a lot of lights right back here in all different types of watt seconds. So this is an Alien B, 320 watt seconds, a Profoto, 500 watt seconds, Flashpoint, 600 watt seconds, Einstein, 640 watt seconds, Profoto, 1000 watt seconds, Flashpoint, 1200 watt seconds, and a Profoto pack and head system, which also has 1200 watt seconds. So which one has the most light output? Well, what we're going to do here is I actually have a light right back here. And we're going to start lining these up one by one, and I'll put these right here. We have this C stand to help us line this up. So you can see that I have that lined up right underneath that C stand, centered directly. And we'll put each of these lights right there. And what that will help us do is make sure that when we uh, flash that light, it actually is metered right here by this light meter. Now notice this light meter is stuck on a stand. So our flash will be at the same loca location. Our light meter will be at the exact same location. And so we'll make sure we're uh, metering apples to apples with all of these different things. Now we have this at an angle so that our camera right here it, that's being run by Kelsey, uh, we can show you a little window that shows you the exact readings that we're getting. And as we're doing this really fast, Kelsey's gonna shout out what the reading is. Now, uh, if you're not familiar with metering flash, the thing to know is the higher the number, the more light that's coming out of our flash. So I'm gonna zip over here. We're gonna get all of these one by one. We're gonna start triggering them. We're gonna meter them. And we're gonna start right now. All right, we're gonna start, but before I do, let me explain two things to you. Every single flash that we have here, we have it set to full power, so it's at the maximum output, and the meter that we're metering with has something called auto reset cordless flash metering. In other words, it just waits for a flash to fire, and when it does, it gives us a reading. That's how I can make a flash fire here and get a reading back there. So let's start. We're gonna start with the Alien B B800. It's a 320 watt second flash. It meters at? F13. The Profoto D1 500 watt second light meters at? F18. The Flashpoint 1220M 600 watt second light meters at? F20. The Einstein 640 WS 640 watt seconds meters at? F18. The Profoto D1 1000 watt second light meters at? F25. The Flashpoint 2420, it's a 1200 watt second light. It meters at? F25. The Profoto Acute 2 1200 R, it's a 1200 watt second pack. It meters at? F16. All right, well the data is in and the data doesn't lie. Let's take a look at these numbers. We'll put them up on the screen for you. Now notice that just because you have the most watt seconds doesn't mean you have the most power output. In fact, take a look at this. The Profoto 500 watt second lamp, F18, it equals the Einstein, which is 640 watt seconds. So we got the same amount of power out of a 500 watt second head as we did with a 640 watt second head. But I think the most interesting thing is when we get up to the big guns here, this is a 1000 watt second uh, monolight here, the D1, and it metered at F25. It's the same thing that the Flashpoint 1200 watt second lamp 
uh, our light metered at. So we got as much power out of this as we did with this guy, even though this flash point has more uh, potential for energy, 1200 watt seconds, and it, it actually exceeded the output of our 1200 watt second pro photo. Now, why is that? What's going on? Well, just because you have a lot of watt seconds, that doesn't mean that it equates to power output. There's a lot of stuff going on there, and we know that the D1s are the latest, greatest technology, so they're really efficient in getting that power from the capacitor out through the uh, front of this. Uh, using a great reflector and using a great flash tube. So it's really converting that light or that power into light and doing a great job. Now this other Profoto is great, but it's older technology. So this 1200 watt second Profoto isn't going to keep up with the newer technology. Just like a 1974 Chevy isn't going to keep up with the 2013 Chevy. It just is not going to happen because the efficiencies aren't there. Well, there's another thing that's happening here that's really significant and that's the light modifier. This guy the reflector. Let's take a closer look at that and how it can really change the output of your light. One of the things I found interesting was that the 1200 watt second Pro Photo Pack and Head had an output of F16, which is less than the 1000 watt second Mono Light from Pro Photo, and it had an output of F25. So what gives? Well, one of the things that's really different in our demo was the reflector. And so on our Acute, we had an old reflector that's been replaced with something that looks a little bit different. And so that actually impacts the light quite a bit. In fact, let me show you exactly what's happening. And so we're gonna get our meter all set to go here. This light is exactly at the same place as it was before. We'll just prove this out, I'll hit test. F16. F16, just like it was before. Now watch what happens. I'm gonna take this uh, reflector. This is the old zoom reflector. I'm gonna replace it with a new zoom reflector. It's got a different shape. I'll put it on there. So that's on our flash head now. And now watch this. F22. 22. So we went from 16 to 22 and the only thing that changed was the reflector. Now watch this. I can even take this reflector and I can zoom it in so I can put it really far out and we'll do one more test. F25. 25. From F16 all the way to F25, the only thing that changed was the reflector and how we had that reflector attached to our uh, flash. That's significant because it has ramifications for all kinds of light modifiers. Umbrellas, soft boxes, bouncing light, uh, all the, maybe a, a beauty dish. So those reflectors will either really optimize the light output from your flash or it might minimize that. And so we haven't answered the question, how many watt seconds do you need? Really to understand that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take all of these flashes and we're gonna try to accomplish a few things to help answer that question more clearly. So next up, we're gonna bring a model in and we're gonna put it to the test. All right, let's talk about the test. We're gonna do a couple of tests. The first one, uh, Lachelle has joined me. She is our model today. And what we want to do is to get our light as close as possible to our model while still maintaining a really shallow depth of field. So we want to meter at about 2.8. So Kelsey's back here. She's going to be metering all of this stuff. And we want to do this inside a small environment. And so on the ground right here, I have two lines. One, this yellow line, that represents 10 feet from the wall. This blue line represents 12 feet from the wall. And so we want to do everything within 10 feet if possible, 12 feet at the worst case scenario. Now behind me, I've also built these fake walls to sort of show what our environment is, and we've invited our dog to join us today, so she'll be hanging out to make it more realistic. So let's get started. What we, did, what we did is we took our light and we put it on its very lowest power setting, and let's take a meter reading and see how close we are to 2.8. So let's meter that. 7.1. 7.1, it's way too bright. It's not at that 2.8 setting. I can't take the power down anymore on my light because it's all the way as low as it can go. The only option I have is to move that back. So I'm gonna move it back here all the way back. So there it is, all the way to the wall. And let's meter that. 4.0. 4.0, it's still too bright. So I'll move it to the wall over here. And so we are at the very edge of our uh, range 3.6 3.6 is still too bright so if you hold that for me Kelsey the last thing I can do is ah, I can move this up and I'm gonna be touching the ceiling where I am right there so that is the the very farthest I can get from uh, our model so go ahead 3.6 3.6 okay it's not possible so with a 1200 watt second flashpoint light I can't get far enough away inside of 10 feet to get to 2.8 so what can we do well, let's try the 600 watt second flash point and see if we can do any better. 
Well, we've replaced our flashpoint light from a 1200 watt second light to a 600 watt second light. It is at its lowest power setting as well. And so our first meter reading is what? 4.5. 4.5. So it's still too bright. We need to back that up. So I can't get it at the place I want, which is really close to La Shell. So um, I'm going to take this, make sure that I zip it back a little bit. Let's meter that on one more time. 3.2. 3.2. Keep metering. 2.8. 2.8. Okay. I'm at 2.8. I'm going to take a really quick shot here. So look right at me, Lachelle. Great. All right. And we have shallow depth of field. Looks okay. I like that. We can start uh, working with the light there. So our 600 watt second light uh, met the criteria of being able to shoot within a 10 foot space and still get 2.8. But let's check something else out. Is it possible to use a light that is digital instead of analog and do the same thing and have the option of more power or less power. Well, let's take a look. Well, we've replaced our flashpoint light with a Profoto D1 1000 watt second light. Okay, so this is 400 watt seconds more powerful than the uh, 600 watt second flashpoint that we used to get to 2.8. But watch this. Let's meter the light. 2.8. 2.8. So I can take a digital pack, a nice Profoto D1 pack that is very advanced. It's more expensive, obviously, but even though I have more uh, power, I can dial that down to get to 2.8, which means if I want to use it in the next scenario, which we'll show you in a second, to get a lot of power, I can do that. But if I also want to take that power down, I can do that as well. So again, watt seconds, when you're looking at it, you have to look at the entire package. How much uh, bandwidth do I have to, to power that down and power that up? So if you have a flash point and you want lots of power, you're going to have to have a 1200 watt second pack. And if you want uh, low power, you're going to have to have a 600 watt second pack. With the Profoto D1, you can get low power. And I'll show you now that you can get a lot of power out of that as well. So we have more options. Let me take a picture and I want to show you one more thing with a D1 500 watt second pack. And I think you'll really like it. So let me take a little quick picture here, Lachelle, look this way. Well, we've replaced our D1 1000 watt second light with a D1 500 watt second light. And we've moved it closer than we had our 1000 watt second light. And we meter it and it comes up to... 2.8. 2.8. And so this is the closest we've been so far. That means we get softer light. It's really what I want. And I'll take a picture really quickly. So look right at me, Lachelle. Yeah, that's what I want. I want to be able to move that light around inside this small space. And so getting down to the 500 watt second uh, point and a little bit lower is really well where we need to be in a small environment. So the answer is if you're shooting in a small space like this, and that's really where you're going to live, 300 watt seconds to 500 watt seconds is where you want to be. And you can even get down to that 2.8 with a Profoto D1, as you saw before, but you're not going to be able to get really, really close, uh, but you can get there. Let's talk about the opposite. What if you want to uh, shoot from a uh, distance and you want to light up a large environment and you want to get a lot of power, F22, something like that? How do we do that? So let's look at the big guns next. All right, the next challenge is this. I am uh, pretending like I'm shooting a group right here. So the goal of this is to be able to shoot with a uh, really small aperture, F22, so I can get maximum depth of field so everybody's in focus. And also, I want to be able to light from this uh, edge right here all the way to this edge, so a nice big broad light. And I know that I'm going to need to be shooting uh, back here from about 15 feet to get everybody in the scene without having to use a crazy wide angle lens. And so the light needs to be back. I need to be able to light everything and I need a lot of punch around F22. So right now we have a 600 watt second flash point light with a parabolic umbrella. This is a, a silver umbrella which really magnifies the light, really gives us a lot of punch. And so that is going to give us a lot of power out of any light. And so let's start by metering this light. And also with this umbrella, it's very common to shoot right in front of it. So you can shoot like this with this thing behind you. And so if I'm standing in front of that uh, and I meter there, well, that's just because that's probably how I'm going to shoot. So let's start with our first meter reading. And it is 13. 13, not anywhere near as much power as we need. And I'm going to check this. It is absolutely at the maximum power setting, so I can't get any more out of that. So let's move it closer and we'll see what we can do. So I'm going to move this closer. Kelsey, where, how are we right there? 18. 18, not enough. I want 22. How about that? 25. 25. So back right here. 
22. All right, 22. Well, that's sort of crazy because I'm way too close. It's not going to work. If I come back here to shoot behind this, obviously I have issues. So 600 watt seconds is not going to get it. Let's try the 500 watt second D1 from Profoto to see if it can do any better. All right, now we have the D1 500 watt second uh, light. It's digital, it should be more efficient. Let's start back here where I would normally be shooting it on my camera, but let's meter that right there, Kelsey. 16. 16, not close enough. I'll move this a little bit closer. Let's try that. 20. 20, come a little bit closer. 22. 22. Now, if you look on these lines here, we are about just about two feet farther back with the 500 watt second D1 as opposed to the 600 watt second flash point. Both of them are still too close, but you can see this is a little bit more efficient with the output of its light. Let's jump up to the big guns. Let's get a flash point 1200 watt second head and let's see if we can make this happen. We now have a flash point 1200 watt second head. It's at full power. We have it at a, a distance uh, and we're gonna start there. So let's meter this, Kelsey, see where we are. F16. 16. 16, it's punchy, but it's not 22 where we wanna be. So I'm gonna move this a little bit closer. Meter that, please. F18. 18, we're getting there. F22. 22, okay, well look. We're about at the exact same place that we were when we had the D1 500 watt second head. So what gives? Remember, watt seconds is only the energy potential. How your flash head converts that energy into light depends on the circuitry, the reflector, and a number of other things. And so let's do something. Let's take a high-end D1 1000 watt second light and see if it can do better than this 15 foot mark and I think that this reflector here has something to do with that. All right, well now we have a Profoto D1 1000 watt second head out here and notice it's in the same position that we had or similar position that we had the flash point 1200 watt second head. So this is less watt seconds, same position. And notice that we don't have a reflector on the end of this D1 head because the D1s have a, a diffusion uh, panel at the end and so they don't always need a reflector. It's one of the nice advantages of the D1. You don't always have to have a reflector. That is really gonna punch a lot of light out to this parabolic umbrella and give us some great results. So let's take a look. This metered at F22 with our flash point at about this uh, range. Let's see what the D1 head meters at. F32. 32. So a lot more punch with uh, less watt seconds. So let's move this back. So Kelsey, what do we have? F25. 25, moving back. F20. F20, so about right here. Let's get that 22. F22. F22. All right, now our parameters are met. I can shoot back here at about 15 feet. I can get the whole scene. We're at F22. How many watt seconds did it take? It took 1,000 watt seconds but it took 1000 watt seconds from a really nice head that is digital and it's optimized for really nice uh, high power output. So uh, the, the uh, final uh, judgment here is if you need a lot of power like this, what I would consider doing is getting a nicer uh, head because you'll get more power for your watt seconds. It's gonna be more expensive, but remember this D1 head with 1000 watt seconds, we were able to bring that close tune it down to 2.8 and get that shot as well. And so with a 1200 watt second flash point, you'd probably have to have two or maybe three of those to get the punch that you need at this distance. You can do the same thing with one D1 head. It's more expensive, it's much more expensive, but when you're putting all these different sets together and trying to get this kind of stuff, it's more versatile, it'll save you time, it's less gear to lug around. In the long run, it's gonna save you money. And so the final verdict is how many watt seconds do you need to do this kind of stuff? At least 1200 watt seconds or an optimized head like this one. You might even consider going all the way up to 2400 watt seconds to get a lot of punch from a big environment like this. Well, the point of all of this is to illustrate the point that watt seconds don't equate to power. So you can't uh, compare one brand of watt seconds to another brand of watt seconds because of the entire package. So the bottom line is, if you want the best bang for your buck, you really need to get a higher end flash that really optimizes those watt seconds, just like a car that has really high gas mileage. The downside is those flashes are very expensive. And so if you're on a budget, consider getting multiple flashes if you need a lot of light. 
If you're, you really need a lot of punch, just to review, you need at least 1200 watt seconds, maybe even up to 2400 watt seconds to really get a lot of light. If you're shooting indoors and doing mostly portraits, then three to 500 watt seconds, maybe even 600 watt seconds is gonna do you just fine. And I hope that helps out. I know it's not a clear cut answer because it's all variable and where you shoot is changing. One of the things that you might want to consider is to go to a rental house if one is close to you, rent some lights, play with them for a few days and see what works best for you. Well, I hope that helps you out. Thanks for joining us this week. If you have a question about photography or photography gear, send me your question to askmark at adorama.com. I'll see you again next week. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. Welcome to an episode. For the record, I know scientific -y is not a word. Speed. <laughs> <laughs> Lady, come on. <laughs> Help us out here. So I was calling out F25, so it'd be like, ow. Yeah. <laughs> you know, every time I'm going to flash that light, right? Give it some gusto, Kelsey. F16? F18? F20? What was I talking about? <laughs> Digital Photography One-on-One -on -one is written and produced by Snap Factory. For more information about our workshops, visit snapfactory.com. <laughs>